praise the Lord, mightiest prophet of the Lord. Amen. Now, Pastor Joanne, the Lord has spoken with me this past night about the meeting that is coming up today. The meeting that is beginning today in Eldred. Uh, this is going to be a historic meeting. It's going to be a major, major historic meeting. And uh, even as I announce this, those who are very sick patients, please don't, do not put them on the road. Do not put them on the long drive because even entering Eldred is going to be a problem. It may even take about five to six hours for, for the vehicle to enter the city of Eldred. But anyhow, within the backdrop of that information, the Lord has spoken with me about the mega meeting that is coming up in Eldred, the mega Eldred Grand Revival Healing Service. And I see a baby whose eyes are opened. I see a baby whose eyes the Lord is going to open. And so that means the Lord is going to open a lot of blind eyes, including blind eyes from babies. It is going to be a historic moment for the church to behold. And again, this is the treasure of the gospel that the Lord sent me with, the treasure of the gospel of repentance and holiness. When I came rebuking sin in the church, and I told the church to repent and turn away from the wickedness you see in the church in America, this whole thing of false prophets, anybody coming on TV and saying he's a prophet, and you see them from the way they are talking and their demeanor, they do not even befit the prophet of the Lord, they do not even befit the apostles of God, they do not even befit the, the stature of the pastors, the shepherds of the Lord. And all over the world, in Latin America, in Asia, in Africa, and that's why I came rebuking that kind of decay and asking the church to repent and return to the holiness of Jesus. You see that all the messengers, the so-called messengers that are preaching the gospel on the world now, they are preaching a gospel of money, providence, and then and, and, and essentially corruption. And that's why I came rebuking that decay and corruption and apostasy. Because I say the Lord wants to visit the house. Now I have seen this tremendous revival, the healing service. The Lord is going to do a lot of shocking healing, including the miracle of creation. I see a baby this past night. He showed me a lot of healings, including a baby whose blind eyes opened. And that means the Lord is going to open a lot of blind eyes of babies that were blind. And we have a special gate that is designated to those who are very sick, those who are blind, deaf, crippled, where we have put our TV cameras to record them as they enter into the stadium so that we can see their condition before they are healed and after they are healed that the Lord Jesus may be maximally may be maximally glorified. We may magnify his glory. And so let all people simply obey the instructions you are given. If you are shown the gate, I'm told it's gate number one, where all the TV cameras are, they're interviewing each person, the blind that are being led, the deaf that are being led, the mute being led, the, the, the cripples that are being carried uh, and being wooed, that they are being interviewed there, the history is being taken by senior doctors and some professors of university in gate number one professors of media, professors of medicine, all of them are there checking the different uh, histories and conditions as people enter into the stadium in order that we may glorify Jesus. But I've seen a massive, massive, massive healing of the cripples, including crippled babies that will walk, and the blind, including bl massive healing, opening of blind eyes, including the blind babies that will be able to see, massive healing of the deaf massive healing of the mute, massive healing of the lame, massive healing of the paralytic, massive healing of the broken back, massive healing of the broken necks, those whose hips are broken are metal, the massive healing of broken knees, any other broken bones including ribs and skulls. I've seen the massive dissolving of tumors and drying up of cancers, leukemia, diabetes, and hypertension, and HIV, all the blood conditions, even the kidneys that were going through the dialysis, the failures, the Lord is now going to give a new organ. I have seen also massive drying of wounds, including leprosy, and I have seen 
are at the same time the massive stopping of wounds that are bleeding, bleeding diseases, and the Lord is going to open wounds. The Lord is going to do tremendous works. There will be standing sign and wonder unto this church. That is why, again, I came with the message of repentance and the return to holiness, because the Lord wanted to visit the church. Now we are beholding that moment, and he's using this to break on the church, to call the church from all the four winds of the earth, and focus them on Eldoret, and tell them, look what I intend to do in the church in the nick of time before the rapture of the church. I fear, I fear very much that the church is sitting on the verge of a major, major kidnap by the Lord, a major rapture, a major take-up to be taken up into the kingdom of God. The signs are there. We've watched the signs in the news. We have seen the signs with our own eyes. We have read it in the papers. We've heard it in the news. And so nobody can ever be told about the signs of the time. These we have seen, the apostasy in the church. These are the signs. There's the tsunami, the flood, the earthquake. I have gone all over the earth prophesying the major earthquake. I prophesied the earthquake that came and caused the first Asian tsunami. I prophesied the earthquake in Iran and also in Russia on that 25th and 26th of March 2006. And they happened exactly 31st of that month, March, on Friday 31st of March 2006 in Iran. And then on, on, the, on the 21st of April, the same 2006 in Russia, I prophesied the Haiti earthquake, the Chile earthquake. I prophesied the recent earthquake that shook Nepal and Mount Everest. I have prophesied the earthquake globally, the global economic crisis. I have prophesied Ebola, the diseases. So the signs are there. Nobody can ever claim that they have not beheld the signs of the hour. I have prophesied the global famine. I have preached to the ends of the earth announcing the coming of the Messiah. But now, even as we know that the church is sitting on the verge, of eternity. Now look at the beautiful revival that exploded in Kenya. At one point, this past two, two weeks, three weeks ago, it's like the entire nation was repenting and being baptized. But now look, they're now assembling in their largest million. The meeting has not begun. Arrivals are today, but as of yesterday, the field was almost three quarters full. 45 acres of the field, 45. Even the authorities the police were telling us that the calculation of that, scientific calculation, is that when the field is full, it is between 6 to 7 million people. So we are talking about the historic end-time explosion of revival, and the Lord is saying he's going to heal people in mass. Massive crippled walk, massive blind see, massive death here, massive mute speak, massive limb walk and then straight to the feet straight, massive broken hips healed. Massive broken back seal, massive broken calcium, massive tumor dissolved, massive cancer dry, massive internal organs, heart condition, the liver, the spleen, the cancers of the liver, all kinds of blood conditions dried up. All these massive healings and creation of fingers, hands, whatever it is the Lord is going to do today, there is no limit today. But these are the fruits of repentance and the return to righteousness. They return to holiness. And so the Lord is using this revival here today to minister unto the winds of the earth, the four ends of the earth, that when you repent and you prepare the way, a holy way, the highway of holiness, and turn away from the gospel of money and prosperity, and turn away from deception and lies, and turn away from sexual immorality, and turn away from the worldliness, I am able to do this. This is what I intend to do. Because he said that the latter church would have the latter glory whose authority and anointing and power would be much greater than Pentecost, the past glory. And so I have seen a tremendous way in which the Lord is going to prepare the four ends of the earth. The four corners of the earth are going to be prepared for the glorious coming of the Messiah by the Lord speaking in this major, major visitation, this major visitation that is going to take place in Eldoret. Remember his name is Jehovah Elohim, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Hosseinu, 
Jehovah Adonai, Jehovah Sabaoth, Jehovah El Olam, Jehovah El Lion, Jehovah Roshi, Jehovah Yiro, Jehovah El Gido, Jehovah Sitenu, Jehovah El Shaddai, Jehovah Rafa, Jehovah Shama, Jehovah El Okenu, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah El Oreka, Jehovah Metabistan. He is Jehovah, the God, the creator of Israel, and he is the one that gave us Christ Jesus, that we may live to behold such a historic day in the church, like what is right in front of us here today. The nations that are tuned in across the world, maybe you are not able to arrive here, but today we have a huge number of guest pastors from all over the world, more than 400, we don't know, probably 600. But those who are not able to witness, to partake of this, just be informed that you will be streaming it on NTV. First of all, those who can watch it terrestrially within the region, the East African region, and other regions, NTV will be live beginning tomorrow. And those who are able to stream through the web, you are able to follow the meeting, and it will be on radio also. However, the Lord is going to use this to stir up your hearts and cause you to long much more for the righteousness of the Lord, to have a greater longing for the coming of the Messiah, to begin to prepare a highway of holiness, to begin to understand that all the visitations of the cloud of God, of the reign of the Holy Spirit, and all the other visitations that have been coming and rocking the earth ever since the Lord sent this ministry, those visitations have been preparing for this culmination that now, one day, the Messiah will be able to find the Holy Bride. They have been preparing for this hour when the hearts of men will be drawn to righteousness. When everybody else now will be able to see themselves longing to shed up the chains of this world, the worldliness that you see, the immorality, the moral rot that you see in the church, that a purified worship may once more enter the glorious kingdom of God. I have said it time and again, across the end of the earth, I have said that when the heavens see, when they look at the Messiah, they see the skull. They see the wounds. But they ask, however, when we look at the church, we ask, but where is the bride for whom he paid such a horrendous price? And that's why I think Today becomes a very important day of reality when the church can make substantive gain, can make significant gain by deciding now to prepare for that glorious church for which the Messiah went to the cross and paid such a horrendous price. The wounds we have seen, the scars we have seen, the torture we saw, we read about it in the Bible, but when we look down into the earth, if you look at North America, Central America, South America, the whole of Africa, you look at Asia, Australia, New Zealand, the island, Europe, everywhere, you don't see the church that the Lord purchased, the holy church for which he paid such an enormous price, the ultimate price with his life. And that's why this day presented a noble and wonderful and golden opportunity for us to rise up to the expectation of heaven, that now by the help of the Holy Spirit, a new kind of worship may begin to crescendo, may begin to symphony into the throne of God. But right now, we can decide as a people, as a church globally, and go back to holiness, and go back to repentance, and embrace righteousness, and take up moral purity, that for once, there may be a smile on the face of the Lord. Because in the recent past, whenever the Lord has looked at the church, only he has nailed him, crucified him. He hears the church crucifying him again, nailing him again. A church that is not delivered, a church that is as if saying that the Messiah should go back to the cross. But today we have a real opportunity to make a major leap, a major step that as the people of the earth, 
no matter your time zone, we can prepare and embrace this verse of eternity. Embrace this hour at which the Lord is speaking through power, through signs and wonders, through visitation, the lack of glory that was promised, that we may now wake up to the, the, the moment, the reality of the moment, and prepare the glorious bride that befits the Lord Jesus and the heaven we came to announce here. May the Lord bless you all as you traveled all the way. And those of you as you prepare in your home, may you prepare your heart. Let you understand one thing, that the focus is on the coming of the Messiah. Whatsoever you will see, whatsoever you will hear in other all of it is geared towards starting up your heart, moving you from the position of complacency to a place where you now deliberately, intentionally, actively get involved in preparing the way in your heart for the glorious coming of the Messiah. He says that let us remove the rocks, the mountains in our heart. Let us now yield unto the demands of the Holy Spirit. Let us now fill up the valley and the depression of our hearts and to smoothen up also the rugged places in our heart, that the Lord may be able to pass through our heart to find a way through our heart to find a way in our heart for His glorious and most anticipated return. Shalom, shalom, shalom. <laughs>